and we are live what's happening everyone welcome back to the punch perfect boxing channel proudly sponsored by empire fight store before we get going today please make sure to like the video comment your prediction for this fight down below and if you're new please make sure to subscribe to the channel today i'm going to be doing my punch perfect prediction for artem delakai defending his wba flyweight world championship against unbeaten mandatory challenger david jimenez this saturday on the undercard of arta batervia versus anthony yard available on bt sports over here in the uk and available on espn over in the states i'm really looking forward to this card in general obviously the main event is the star attraction here and if you want to go and hear my thoughts on that fight please go and check out my preview and prediction out now on the channel. But just in terms of the undercard, I think it's a solid undercard. This is the standout fight for me. A bit of a random fight, you know, Ukrainian defending his flyweight world championship against a, an unbeaten Costa Rican. You don't usually see those end up on UK cards. Usually has to be a UK uh, fighter featured at the very least. But this is a good little underrated fight that I don't think a lot of people pay attention to. But it's a real good and obviously the debut of Moses or Torma on the undercard as well, who I regarded as the best British boxer I've ever seen at youth level and that's a big statement seen a lot of good amateurs at youth level in this country but Moses Sotoma is the best of the bunch in my opinion so look forward to his debut but this is the fight that I'm looking forward to most outside of the main event getting into it I wanted to talk about Alton Dalakai and actually and make the point right off the bat before someone clicks on this video maybe just here's my introduction and then things I'll move on Artem Dalakayan is nowhere near as bad as everyone makes out and is also a much better fighter than everyone likes to give him credit for. Because he's been inactive and because he hasn't been unifying and because he's um, you know, had periods of inactivity and he's 35 years old and he doesn't have really a signature win against a, a prime opponent, everyone just likes to say, I'll oh, strip him, he's, he's awful, he's not any good. It reminds me a little bit of Arsene Goulamarian at Cruiserweight. He's a very good fighter as well, but because he's been inactive and because there's bigger names in the division, people overlook him. And the same with Dalakayan. Is Sonny Edwards better than him? Yeah, I would say so. Is Bam, you know, once he moves down, is Bam Rodriguez going to be better than him? Yeah, I would say so. Was Junto Nakatani before he moved up better than him? I would say so. Is Julio Cesar Martinez better than him? Maybe. I don't rate Martinez as highly as some people do, but you could definitely make the argument and probably has more signature wins than him as well. But ultimately, he's still a world-class fighter. And he's not elite by any means, but he's going to take a very good fighter to be able to beat him. And unless he unifies, I don't really see many of the contenders in that division being able to beat him. So don't overlook him. I think he's much better than everyone makes out. Also, there was uh, something I wanted to mention. It was uh, on Twitter just before Christmas. There was a Spaces. And uh, for those that don't know, it's basically like a live podcast that Twitter enables you to do now. And Sonny Edwards joined one of them and... The host of it, I'm not going to um, mention his name because I thought he was a little bit disrespectful in what he said, but he basically said to Sonny, and he's probably playing up to Sonny in fairness, but he basically said like, oh that random Russian dude in your weight class, won't you take his belt, da, 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 and all this sort of stuff, knowing full well probably that he's a Ukrainian fighter, so same Russian, just a bit disrespectful all round and, and disregarding him, and it was Sonny, and this is one of the reasons I like Sonny, is he bigs up his rivals rather than downplaying them, because a lot of boxers nowadays tell you their rivals are rubbish, and then when they beat them expect full credit from fans now what Sonny does is the correct way to go about it as a champion is tell everyone that the champions are great so when you beat them you get maximum credit but he basically was open and honest and just said look Dana Kine's a good fighter and he agreed with basically what I think is the best thing about Dana Kine, is he's very deceptive not in the uh, George Cambosis type of way let's say that but uh, he's deceptive in the way that he looks like he's making so many errors. You know, he kind of over the front foot at times, the chin's out in the air, the hands are low. But he's doing that because that's how he has success. He lures you in, he makes you attack him, commit to him, and then he'll counter you and move away. At times he'll do that to get you to bite, so then he'll throw his own shots when you, you know, maybe your guard drops or you look to go and throw your own punch or you look to move a certain way, he'll then attack. And he's very deceptive with the way he sets up his power punches. He doesn't look like he has much power, but with 15 KOs and 21 wins... That tells you he can bang a little bit. And the way he sets up that right hand, he sneakily throws it. And I think he's a deceptive fighter. And Sonny kind of bigged that up as well. And that's definitely how I feel about him. So those are the, the best parts of his game, in my opinion, just to, to continue on from that stylistically. His hands, you know, keeping them nice and low means that his opponents always feel obliged to attack and feel like there's room to attack. But because his reflexes are good and because his timing's good and his anticipation's good, he'll either just take that half step back or, or dip or dive one way and then counter you and move off. 
or he'll actually just wait for you to do an action and then commit himself and push you back and stand there and trade. Because although he is a little bit more defensive than attack-minded, he will stand there in the pocket with you and throw to the body and push you back and, and stand his ground and let you know he's there. So he's a good fighter, Dadakine, and I think he's one of those that he's better than you think, and when you're in there with in the ring with him, you find out just how good he is. And I think Sonny definitely bigged that up, and it's something I agree with. Um, in terms of his career, like I say, the downsides are 35 years old now and has had long periods of inactivity, which is a bit of an issue. Obviously, he does represent Ukraine, so there was that period um, last year where Usyk, Loma, etc. were all out of action. Dalakayan was the same, just took a little bit of time away from boxing to focus on his, his countrymen and his countrywomen. Um, but even before that, there were periods, mainly because of the pandemic as well, but there's just been a few times since winning the title in 2018 against the washed-up Brian Valoria. He hasn't been necessarily busy. He started his title reign busy, but it hasn't really continued, um, and that's for multiple reasons. Not not so much injuries or anything like that, but like I say, the pandemic, the war in Ukraine, things like that have affected him. But won that title in 2018 against the washed-up Brian Valoria. Brian Valoria is one of the best fighters in the lower weight classes of the modern era, but by the time... Um, by the time that Dalakine got his hands on him, he was washed up at that point, so it's perfect timing. Not really any signature wins since then. The best win, I would actually say, is his most recent title defence against Lewis Concepcion, uh, November of 2021, I believe. Um, I thought that was a good performance, and after a period of inactivity, he looked better than I expected. Some early ring rust, but then grew into the fight. And Concepcion is a good name to have on your resume as a champion at the flyweight weight class. He's a stalwart of the lower weight division, so a good performance and a good win to have but again it was followed by 12 or 13 months of inactivity which is a bit of an issue but overall Dalakine's a damn good fighter so don't sleep on him moving on now to his mandatory challenger David Jimenez really interesting proposition this weekend I'm quite excited to find out what the odds are on him um, he entered last year into a fight with Ricardo Sandoval who he was an underdog against and he produced a massive upset. Sandoval was on the cusp of challenging for a world title. He was one of the most exciting young fighters coming through in the lower weight classes. At flyweight, it felt like he was one of the only real challengers to any of the champions and we were all excited about his his prospects and you know where his ceiling was. But David Jimenez turned up and upset the apple cart and to be honest, it was a very close fight and I do think there is a case for Sandoval winning it. The late knockdown in favour of Jimenez probably... Uh, turn things and if you look at the judges scorecard it did seem that way there was a point taken off Jimenez as well which cancelled it out a little bit but a lot of people felt Sandoval won the fight but regardless of of who you thought won it it was very close and Jimenez was in the fight which showed he can belong at world level because it was against a world-class flyweight in Sandoval so he's proven now he is world-class and when you see that it weren't no random performance you know it wasn't like he just turned up and got the better of the night and he'll never do anything again at world level Go and look at this guy's rap sheet, go and look at his background, go and look at his pedigree. This was a top class, world class amateur that medalled at the Pan American Games, medal at the World Championships. I say that all the time, it's the hardest tournament to medal at and he was able to do that. He's mixed it with some really good names in the amateurs, whether it be Ankel Acosta who's held world titles in the pros. You know, Jack Bateson from the UK will be a familiar name who was a top amateur. He's mixed it against really good opposition in the amateurs. My biggest issue was he stayed in the amateurs for far too long. He stayed in the amateurs pretty much till 2018, which meant that he lost a lot of momentum because over the years as an amateur, he got less and less competitive at the top level. So once he did turn pro, I think it was the right decision, which is why he's 30 years old and only 11-0 and 0 and only getting to world level at this stage was because he broke through in Costa Rica where there aren't as many opportunities, not as many eyes on you, and you have to build your way up the rankings. And eventually, when you get your opportunity in America against the Ricardo Sandoval, you have to take it, and he did just that. And I think he stands a really good chance of winning this fight. His style is interesting, because in most of his fights, because he's been the superior guy in there, he's gone after them, and he's been a bit more of a pressure fighter. He's walking you down, he's getting you to the ropes, he's unloading, and he's looking to, to pile on the pressure and outwork you and impress the judges with an aggressive come forward style but against Sandoval it's very different he started quite aggressive and they were both in the center of the ring but as the fight went on it was Sandoval who was chasing and Jimenez actually boxing off the back foot and what Jimenez did brilliantly in that fight was actually sort of stand with Sandoval 
wait for Sandoval to do his work and then finish the exchange. And he was fighting really well off the break, fighting really well with counters and put forth a really good performance, but an uncharacteristic performance. You know, he probably went back a little bit more to his amateur days with that performance as he went more onto the back foot and he boxed when he needed to and was uh, classy and clinical in moments that he needed to be. He did get hit to the body a lot by Sandoval and I do think Sandoval outworked him at various points and as the longer, taller man, Sandoval was able to pin him to the ropes at times. But for the most part, Jimenez being small meant that he was able to get his work done on the inside, able to get his work done um, coming off the break as well. And it was a good, well-rounded performance. What I'm interested to see in this fight is how does he approach it. If he tries to lure Dalakayan onto him, that will be interesting. But if he tries to go after Dalakayan, he may be playing into his hands a little bit. And this is where I, I mentioned at the start of the video, it could become a bit of a bad fight is if both of them try and go on the back foot and then we get them both being really negative. Dalakine will enjoy a bit of a size advantage over Jimenez, which makes me think he'll probably look to operate more off the back foot and then fight when he needs to in bursts, like he usually does. But for Jimenez, does he revert to type and, and go after Dalakayan where you could be found punching a lot of air because Dalakine's good off the back foot? Or do you try and lure him on yourself and actually box off the back foot and pick your shots and be a little bit, uh, be a little bit more selective with your punches? That could work quite nicely for him as well. So I'm interested to see. You know, this looks like one of those fights where I think everyone would say, do you know what? This is 100% going to uh, go into the scorecards. Both of them carry decent power. dalakine has got decent power. Jimenez obviously put down Sandoval with a beautiful shot, but has been down himself a couple of years prior against Ortiz. So I think Jimenez can can be hurt, and I think uh, Dalakai can be hit. So don't rule out potentially either of them maybe getting the stoppage or going down. But generally, it feels like a distance fight. How do I think it will play out? Dalakai's inactivity does worry me a little bit. The age of 35 does worry me a little bit. Jimenez has got all the momentum here and is definitely underrated. I think the only thing that's difficult for Jimenez is preparation because you don't know how Dalakai's going to approach it. And if Dalakine is off the back foot, he then has to go back to being a pressure fighter. Or if Dalakine's a bit more aggressive, he then has to go on the back foot. Whilst Jimenez can do both, it might be difficult for him to make a decision and sustain it. And he may be caught between two styles. Dalakine, like I say, is underrated. And I do favour him to win this fight very closely on points. But this is such a hard fight to call. I'd probably swerve betting on it, to be honest. I'd maybe do the over or unders on rounds. But to be honest, this is such a hard fight to call. I think... All that we know of both of them leads to Dalakai and winning. But I think recency bias and recent form leads towards Jimenez. I'm going to go for Dalakai ever so slightly. And afterwards, I hope he can go into a unification with Sonny Edwards. You know, it looks like Martinez and Bam are kind of on a collision course. But everyone wants undisputed in the end. The way to speed up that process would be Sonny Edwards fighting Dalakai. So I'd like to see that next. But let me know your thoughts down below, guys. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel. And I'll catch you next time.